peace love and light family this is me and i'm here talking to people about my second birth story what happened with my second child and i feel like it's very important for me to talk about this because we're having so many instances of women of color experiencing hospitals and doctors and certain medical professionals not believing us when we say we're in pain. And I want a lot of people to know this is something that's been going on for years. And this is something that traces back to slavery time and, you know, certain people not believing that we feel pain and not acting like we are humans and doing different experiments on us. But I would like to talk about my birth experience with my second child and let you guys know that you should tell your stories too. We need more people speaking out. We need more people telling us what they went through and what their experiences were. And this is how we can change the paradigm. So, okay. I have a similar experience with the hospital and doctors actually not believing me when I say I'm in pain. So I wrote this down guys, for I don't be long winded with explaining it on my own. Okay, so with my second son, I was actually experiencing, I was 30 weeks pregnant. I was experiencing severe pain for about a week, right? And I was 22 years of age. And this was on a Thursday evening. So my son was born January 12th, the Thursday before the 12th. So the 12th was on Sunday. So on a Thursday evening, I went to the hospital with my spouse and I told them I was experiencing excruciating pains. And it was all over my belly. It was like a burning sensation on the inside of my stomach, like on the front portion of my stomach. And it literally felt like my baby wasn't sitting firm in my stomach. So pregnant women, you'll know what I'm talking about. It felt like my baby was hanging, right? Like hanging really low, hanging down. I felt like I had no support and um, it hurt really bad all over. And I told them that, and I told them the pains was very sharp as well, and I couldn't sit up straight. I literally was leaning forward all the time. I couldn't even sit up like this, guys. Like, I was curled up, right? I was leaning forward all the time, um, and like I said, it felt like my baby was hanging on the inside, and it felt like I had no support holding my baby up, and it was just, just so painful for me. The hospital took me to the triage, which is what they normally do when you're over a certain amount of weeks when you're pregnant they'll take you to the triage. And I only talked to a nurse and she told me that it probably was ball joint pain, which is where you have a muscle on the side of your stomach. And I hope I'm saying it correctly, guys. Um, you can correct me, that's fine. Cause it was so long ago. <laughs> and um, it's somewhere where you have the muscles on the side of your stomach, they stretch out when you're pregnant and you have these muscles when you're pregnant and they can be strained and it can hurt. And she said, that's most likely what it was. And um, I didn't, I, I wasn't seen from a doctor. This nurse didn't even do a head to toe checkup. Anytime you go to the hospital, a nurse has to do a head to toe checkup. So this is something that you guys should know. I'm a nurse myself and a doula. So I know these things. And so she didn't do her head to toe checkup. Um, she didn't even really check me at all. She just asked me what was going on. She told me to contact my doctor. They sent me home. I called my OBGYN and Understand this, guys. A week before this was happening, I told my OBGYN's office that I'm considering switching and going to the midwife group because I would like to have a natural experience. But it wasn't set in stone. I didn't get any paperwork done or sent to them. I was still under my doctor, but I told them I was considering. So um, the doctor's office, the woman in the front office, told me on the phone, she said, call the midwife group. They're not my doctor. You are, Right. But she said, call the midwife group, and she hung up in my face. So I did call the midwife group. The midwife group says, they, that's your doctor. They have to work and do what's needed for you. We can't do anything because that is still your doctor. So I just went ahead the next day. This was on a Friday evening, and I went back to the hospital. And when I went back to the hospital, I was like, my pain's was so bad guys like I was literally crying and I was like I can't sit up I can't move I can't eat I can't drink I felt like I couldn't do anything and my spouse like I couldn't even hold my daughter 
and my spouse was doing a lot to just like help me even go to the bathroom it was just so it was so sad and the pains was actually getting worse so when I went to the hospital I let them know that I felt like the baby was slipping out because it felt like my baby had no support in my stomach and it literally felt like he was hanging down really low and I had no support to where I couldn't even sit up because if I sat up it felt like my baby would like slip out right and when you tell somebody that you would expect me as a nurse what we do is we would need to check you to see if you're dilated because if you feel like your baby is so low to where you feel your baby down there we have to check you then we tell the doctors they didn't do that they didn't check me out didn't get a head to toe didn't see if I was dilated didn't even check me vaginally and I still couldn't bend forward I still was hurting really bad but what they did do was order an ultrasound and notes guys I still didn't talk to a doctor they called my doctor and got orders from my doctor as to what to do because that's how that hospital work my doctor has a contract with that hospital hospital which is why I had to go to that hospital and um my doctor could have came to see me both those times but I guess because they were go to the midwife group <laughs> although that's not my doctor <laughs> she wouldn't come see me, but she did tell them what to do. So she told them to get an ultrasound. Um, the ultrasound technician, she, when she was doing the ultrasound, she had to keep going really low, lower than low. And when you're like, when you have a full baby, there's no reason why they would have to go so low, right? Just to see and do the measurements with your baby's head. So that mean, she was like, your baby's abnormally low. I haven't seen this before. And she said, but, you know, they send it off to a radiologist and the radiologist get the results to a doctor and your doctor says what they need, right? And the nurse was going to, she was going to send me home again. She said, your doctor said, just give her a call, which I already tried to do that, and um, just to discharge you. I said, no, I'm hurting really bad. Can y'all give me something, anything? I can barely function and y'all are going to send me home and this is my second time coming. And when I went Friday, this was late. So this is rolling over into like Saturday morning, right? And she gave me an injection when I asked her, which I know about medications. I've been going to school for nursing around that time. When I asked her, what did you give me? She said, I gave you something to help with pain. Didn't tell me specifically what it was. So I'm assuming it was a placebo because I didn't feel when you're getting a pain injection, one you got to tell the patient what you're giving them. She didn't tell me the name of it. I said what it is. She's like, oh, it's just something to help with the pain. Just let me know if it works. I told her it didn't work. I feel nothing. I don't even feel like you gave me anything. <laughs> and um, they ended up sending me home. It was like, oh, call your doctor. Okay. So, and for those of you that don't know what a placebo is, it's basically like saline, a saline solution. They'll give it to patients that say that they're in pain and they do it to try and see if you're lying and to see if you are really in pain and no doctor is going to tell you they're giving you a placebo just letting you know so um when I um before I left I said can you give me anything else for the pain she's like didn't you tell me that medication didn't work I said it didn't so but can you give me something she's like no just call your doctor so I'm like okay so I went home <laughs> I couldn't leave out of my bed. I couldn't even sit up. I literally was curled up into a ball in my bed. And granted, the doc, the hospital still, like, I never seen a doctor. When I called my doctor's office, they send you to, like, a nurse line, and they said the doctor would call you back. I never received a call back. And I'm receiving massive pains, and I'm curled up. I can't eat. I can't drink. I could barely freaking function and move so Sunday morning around 5 a.m. I start feeling massive pressure on my bowels and I'm assuming I'm like maybe I gotta make a bowel movement but I'm like hurting so bad struggling to go to the bathroom my spouse was asleep so I'm screaming for him to like please come please come and he finally hears me and as soon as he like literally pops up and runs to the bathroom I told him to put his hands out and my whole baby just literally slipped out of my body into his hands no push Nothing. I literally, like, when I thought I had to go to the bathroom, I literally stood up straight. And by the time I stood up straight, gravity just made it, just, like, made him fall. So my spouse luckily had both his hands out, and my baby was literally in his hands. And it was so scary because it didn't look like a baby. Um, we didn't know what it was. It kind of looked like an organ. 
and come to find out our baby was still in the sack which is why it looked like that and also when the baby slipped out the umbilical cord slipped out too so the umbilical cord was not even connected to me so as his hands is like literally right there by my body. So here's my body, here's his hands, and he literally catches the baby, but the umbilical cord slips right on top and a little piece of the placenta comes too. And literally he could walk away. And that's obviously why I felt like my ba baby was hanging in my stomach because the placenta wasn't even attached to me. And he literally was like just dangling in there, right? So he was in the sack and we called the ambulance and this guys was one of the most scariest experiences of my life. And I, I'm a nurse. I've experienced some kind of scary situations and um, I've seen some pretty gory things and I'm okay with seeing those things. But this is really scary when one, you don't know if your baby's alive or dead. So when the ambulance get there, they rip open the sack. The cord is wrapped around my baby's neck three times and my baby's not breathing, not making a noise, the heart's not beating and they didn't have anything to resuscitate him. So then they call, I believe the company's called Lifestar. These are, this is a company that flies on helicopters for emergency situations. So they call Lifestar, I believe. And then Lifestar, by the time they finally come and guys, y'all gotta know this is over 30 minutes. My baby's not breathing. <laughs> My, his heart's not beating he's not making no noise not even moving it was just like like it literally looked like a dead baby and I'm sitting here crying and like I'm hurting so when Lifestar came they did have the stuff to resuscitate him and they took him away and I'm going on the ambulance going to the hospital and they did tell me that by the time they got to the hospital as soon as they got to the hospital is when they got a heartbeat and he was on breathing machine so they and they took him to the neonatal ICU. So as I get to the hospital, they check me out and the doctor that checked me out says, oh, it most likely is placenta. I believe it's called placenta primavera, guys. Um, I don't know the term and correct me if I'm wrong. Again, put it down here for people can know these medical terms and also to look these things up for if you're experiencing these things that you know what's going on. So they basically sent me to the mother baby, although I didn't have my baby. My baby was in a neonatal ICU and I'm still hurting tremendously, guys. <laughs> like all over my stomach is like literally hurting, painful. I'm feeling like that burning sensation at all over my stomach. So you got like, here's my belly and it's like burning all over on the inside of my stomach. And um, I told the nurse, I'm like, I'm like, this pain is like hurting. And I had a baby before. I never experienced this and my belly was still firm and normally after you have a belly your belly actually gets soft and you mothers know what I'm talking about and your uterus starts contracting and your uterus will start to get low so then your belly will start to hang low and she called the doctor he said it's probably gas so she he told her to give me some medicine and um I I was like I don't think it's gas but I took the medicine just in case whatever you know this is what the doctor say and then I was like, no, I'm still hurting so bad. And she checked my stomach again. And she was concerned because she was like, your stomach isn't going down. I can't feel your uterus. I don't know what's going on. And it does feel firm and round. And I told her like it hurts so bad. So then she calls the doctor again. He says, it's most likely constipation. Give me something to make me go to the bathroom. And that's when I was kind of drawing the line. And I was like, I'm not constipated. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not constipated at all. So um, I told her I'm not constipated and I'm not going to take no constipation medicine when I'm not. And I told her like, I'm just like hurting. It's just, it's hurting and my stomach isn't, she noticed my stomach wasn't going down. So then she gets another nurse to check me out. That nurse was like, we need to get multiple people to check just to make sure. And six different nurses literally come and check my stomach. And they all were like, yeah, this feels weird. Her stomach is like feeling firm. Um, call the doctor. You need to call the doctor. She calls the doctor and he, she tells me the doctor yells at her and says, I told you what to do already and literally hung up in her face. So when she tries to discharge me, I refuse to leave because I told her, I'm like, I'm hurting. Something's not right. This is not a normal feeling. It's not a normal pain. It's sharp pains and it's hurting so bad. Like I barely still can sit all the way up. So she calls the doctor and she said, she tells the doctor I'm refusing to leave. And she 
suggest to the doctor can we just get her a scan of some sort where they could scan her stomach because her stomach do feel weird she says she's not constipated and it's not gas so i believe they sent me to get an mri and i after the mri i go up to my room and then all of a sudden a team of surgeons come into my um room and literally they say i have to go into emergency surgery because my appendix must have busted and that's what caused my placenta to be separated and that's what caused my baby to be born so early and they said um they see the remains of it all over my stomach and it looked bad so I had to immediately go in for surgery so when I get out of surgery they show me a picture of literally what my appendix left over and it was pretty gory it was like really green and it was all over my stomach and they said they had to pump my stomach so many times and they'd never had to do that before and most likely that's because I just had a baby and um the nurse came in and she told me the doctor called her and told her you saved my ass <laughs> and he told her that girl would have died if she would have went home um he was like wow like I can't believe you just saved my ass so the infection from my appendix was so bad, guys. Um, they actually, I actually ended up having to stay in the hospital for two and a half weeks because different antibiotics that wasn't working for it. And my son, he was in the hospital in the neonatal ICU for 10 weeks. And that is why our system needs to take better care of women. This is why it is important to have a doula. This is why it is important to have somebody that advocates for you. I don't know what I would have done if that nurse would have just gave up and not believed me. But the fact that she advocated for me, she believed me, she trusted my word and that, and she stood firm with the doctor. She kept calling him. Although he was cursing her out, getting angry at her, she was persistent. And this is what women need. This is what we need, somebody that can advocate, somebody that can be persistent, and somebody that will believe you when you say what you're experiencing. Believe a black woman when she says she is hurting. The agenda stems from slavery, guys, and them thinking that women of color are animals and treating us worse than animals. And there are monumental statues of surgeons that experimented on melanated women and didn't give pain medication when they was experimenting with different surgeries on these women because they said, we don't feel pain. And this was in their medical books. And they would perform surgeries on women and just, it, it, it's, it's really horrible on black women. And we must advocate for ourselves we must advocate for those around us. We must love our neighbor. We must love ourselves. And we must get back to that village mentality. Remember, they say it takes a village. And it really do. Because if I wouldn't advocate for myself, my, my spouse, he was like, he, he, he believed me, but he was following what, you know, they were saying. And this is why it is important, because... A lot of the times, a male is not going to understand what a female goes through when it comes to labor, when it comes to having a baby, when it comes to what's going on with your body. And sometimes it takes another female being with you, i.e. a doula, a midwife, for them to understand, okay, I'm here with you, I believe you, and let's see what we can do to help you. And what they what should come out of this story and what should come out of the story of the 25 year old is believe a black woman when she says she's in pain period make that a hashtag believe a black woman when she says she's in pain or we could change it believe a melanated woman when she says she's in pain <laughs> guys just like me going back and talking about this experience it's really hard and if for those of you that are wondering what happened to my son due to the traumatic experience that he went to he had to go through surgeries he had a brain bleed he had a brain bleed <laughs> um and my son went through a lot he had multiple surgeries he had cysts on his head um he has seizures he's autistic and he was labeled as developmentally delayed but right now my son is in kindergarten and right now he's like really smart 
and I'm just so thankful to God. I'm so thankful to the universe and I'm so happy that there was another woman there that believed me, that nurse that believed me. And I still remember her name today. Her name is Shane and she works at Memorial <laughs> Hospital in Savannah. Um, if those of you know her, just she's an amazing nurse. And that's what caused me to become a nurse in 2016. So I'm a nurse now, I'm a doula and I advocate for women and I'm here to support women. I'm here to support spouses. I'm here to support your experience and I'm gonna listen to you. And I'm happy that I have the nursing experience that I do. I'm happy that I have the experience of working in a hospital. I'm happy that I have the experience of working at an urgent care. This is what people like me are here for. We're here to listen to you and we're here to provide what it is that you need to take care of you and to ensure that you, your needs are met. And make sure that your medical professionals know that they work for you and your needs to be, need to be met. And they need to believe you when you say you're hurting. Peace, love, and light, guys. Much love.